Mark, tell me, um, you're sitting in your office at your house. I'm sitting in my podcast den in my house. What's going on behind you? I can see a Red Sox jersey, an Astros jersey. What else is going on behind well, you? Well, so, yeah, I have I have a jersey frame from every team that I've played with. So if I, you know, I turn it over here, you'll see the Padre Brewers as well. Nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a home jersey from all five teams that I, that I played with. In my What's on the other side of the Astros? The, Ast the other side of the Astros, Dodgers, Astros, Red Sox, Padres, Brewers. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, man. That's nice cool. studio. I wish I had uh, cold brew on tap in here. But <laughs> yeah, I've got Heath Bell's product right behind me. That's nice. The reason I called, I wanted to just start finding out what people were doing during this coronavirus lockdown. People have said to me, what are guys like you in the world of sports talk going to do when there's no sports to talk about? I said, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to people in sports about what they're doing. So I was curious, what, what are you up to during this lockdown period of time? Are you observing it? Of course. Yeah, uh, certainly. You know, it's, it's interesting because I think and people have, have made this comment that it's, it's kind of nice to have the nuclear family together. I mean, it's, it's 24 hours a day, so, you know, we'll see how, how our wives handle it. But, um, you know, the, it, it's been good to spend time with the kids. They're, they're doing online school, uh, which they're not really set up to do, but they're, they're doing the best they can. Uh, we're taking a lot of walks, walking the dogs like crazy. Um, you know, we've, we, we have a little paddle tennis game we've been playing. We've, we've been playing some board games. P people are on their, you know, Netflix, obviously. So just I think just about similar to what everybody else is doing. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I will say, and I, I didn't know if – I've kind of felt a little bad about this. I will tell you, Saturday afternoon, I went for a walk. I left my house. I walked up and over the hill, and I walked all the way out to the beach. And then I walked up the beach, and then I came back. And when I came back, one of the local bars was open, a place called Pillbox. I know you know it right down here in Solana Beach. Oh, yeah. And they were serving food outside of the front window. And if you bought food, you could actually buy a cocktail. So I decided, let's have a Bloody Mary. So we were standing there just because it was open and we thought we could. And the next thing I knew, there were probably like 20 to 30 people outside in the parking lot saying, oh, we can support these guys. We can buy food here. It was kind of cool. And then I thought, well, am I too close to anybody? And should I not be here in this crowd? And then I thought, but I'm, I'm supporting local business. I... I was dealing with a lot of Hebraic guilt, Mark Loretta. You'll yes. have to forgive me. I'm um, well aware of that. Yeah, I got the Catholic side up here. Yeah. The uh, no, you're right. I think I think there's some misunderstanding of some things. I mean, you know, I think the best thing we can do is is honestly stay stay home for this week or two, three. Even going out and walking around the beach and stuff. I mean, you know, it seems harmless, but I, I think. You know, I, if we're going to do this, we might as well just do it to the tilt, to the hilt, and, and then see what see what happens coming out of it. But it's it's tempting, yeah, it's tempting to you know have play dates or you know let's get together for dinner. You know, you guys haven't been sick, we haven't been sick, but I just don't think that's that's what it's designed to be. I agree. I I felt kind of guilty about it, and then I've decided now. I mean, it's time really for everybody, including myself. I mean, to really really get serious about understanding that. You got to stay home. Going out for a walk around the neighborhood seems reasonable. You know, we're not on a complete, you know, shutdown, lockdown. You walk outside, the cops are going to come get you. But right. I think it's, I think everybody kind of has to do their part if we're going to get serious about this. No question about it. And I think this, the sooner we do it, the sooner we'll sort of come out of it. Because, you know, the other, the other side of the coin is, you know, we can't shut down the world and our economy for, you know, six months, a year or something like that. We need to come out of this as soon as we can because, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to cost lives by by people losing their jobs and not being able to put food on their table and things like that. So it's a very tricky balance to get through this and figure out. But I think once we get the supplies and the hospitals and all the supplies they need, then I think we'll start, you know, see, coming out of this because we'll be able to take care of people if and when they get sick. Yeah. I mean, that's like the biggest concern is, is that, you know, these hospitals could get overwhelmed. Let's talk about something else though, because I know this is what everybody's talking about, but let's turn it around a little bit. Yeah. So there's no sports. It's, right. it's kind of hard to believe, right? That the NCAA basketball tournament was canceled. 
the um, NBA season postponed, but certainly not looking like it's, I mean, unless something happens here and we get this thing handled quickly to your point, baseball season is around the corner. It was supposed to be this Thursday. Right. Uh, what are you, uh, what, what are you occupying your time and your mind with when you just can't turn on a game? I'm curious. Well, you know, I, the, the one thing I'm doing is, is I'm really, uh, studying Spanish quite hard. Oh, uh, yeah. every day, I, this, this is something in 2020, it was sort of a new year's resolution. I, I, I spoke Spanish as a, as a small kid. Um, my, my parents were living in Mexico. Uh, so I learned Spanish right along with English, but I'm, at four years old, I, I didn't really retain it. So it's always been kind of a lifetime goal to get that back with baseball. You know, I know, I know a lot of the slang, but I, I can't put together great sentences. So uh, I've been doing that for the last three months, really, um, online. And I have, a, I have a tutor that I've been meeting with a couple of days a week. We're doing that online as well now. But that's, that's one of my goals, um, and that keeps me pretty busy. And then just just the family stuff. I mean, I think there's there's also some interesting stuff to watch, like on ESPN and stuff. The E three sixties. You know, there's also some classic games. The Bucky Dent game was on. The other oh yeah, I was checking out. I mean, just to see to watch baseball without shifts was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so was nostalgia, and also, quite quite honestly, you know, I'm probably keeping in touch with with family, extended family, and so my good buddies even more so than I would normally, which is kind of a nice, nice byproduct of this. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I mean, there's the, the family I time. I haven't talked in months. Look, look at this. This is fantastic. I know this is, isn't this incredible? It really is. I mean, this is what everybody's learning how to do, which is to still be able to do your job from home or still be able to operate your business from home. And so, you know, with us moving from radio into digital podcasting, you know, we're dependent upon sponsors and some of our sponsors, their businesses have completely shut down, Absolutely. which meant their advertising is shut down. And it's not exactly the most appropriate time to be on the streets selling right now. So we, like so many other people, we're just trying to sustain where we are because we want to be there for our audience and for all of our great friends for all these years. So that when we come through this, to your point, you know, we're all coming through it together as we've gotten through so many other major catastrophes in life in the last 20 years, frankly. Right, right. So, um, so baseball season was going to start last year. You were working for the Cubs this year. You're essentially retired or free agent. When you learn Spanish really well, that's going to make you, that's another tool <laughs> to become a manager in the major leagues. Um, what do you have your eyes on? Is it the Padres? Is it the Dodgers? Uh, is it, I'm just curious. Is it the Astros? Is it the scandal? All teams that you have jerseys behind you. Well, so it's just, yeah, just to clarify. So I, I'm still working with the Cubs, uh, but, you know, back into a front office kind of consulting type business. They, they've been great. I mean, you know, they, they really felt like they needed uh, a bench coach who had managerial experience once they decided to go with David Ross as the manager. And, and I, I, I totally understand that. But they very early on said, hey, you know, you know, interview for the manager's job. You know, if it doesn't work out, we'd love you to stay in the organization. I had I had a two year contract anyway uh, last year, so so I had I had a whole schedule laid out to travel, see the minor leagues, go down to the Dominican Republic, you know, work on my Spanish, but also to do some instruction down there, uh, and hopefully we'll get back to some of that. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, I even before this whole thing hit, I really I really felt fortunate. The silver lining from from last year was that I had I had this flexibility back. My son Frank he's, is a senior in high school. This is really the last time he'll be home. Uh, he's off to college next year. I have a daughter who's a freshman. So to be able to pick and choose my, my schedule, unlike last year, I was gone, you know, as you know, seven and a half months straight, missed out on a lot of things, including uh, my daughter's eighth grade graduation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So the flexibility is, is really nice to, to have back. You know, I didn't know I would have this much time at home, but um, you, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I, 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 I've made it clear I would I would I would love to manage at some point. Um, you know I think I got a taste of the interview interview process last year. Um, there was a lot of turnover. Uh, you know even had you know you mentioned the Astros uh, at the eleventh hour had some had some communication with them about coming on to coach and you know Brad Ausmus was was close to getting that managerial job when they went with Dusty Baker so. That was, you know, that came up late. You never know where things are going to come, where opportunities are come, and, and I'll take it, uh, you know, proverbial day by day. All right. I'll put you on the spot before I let you roll. You ready? Because I didn't know that there was interest with the Astros. Would you have been able to have gone to work there this year 
like two or three years from now when all this passes on and it'll be in the rear view. But I'm curious, would you have gone to be the next part of the next staff? Would that have held you from going in there? Yeah, no, I, I so, so um, actually Jim Crane, the owner called personally and, and just to kind of gauge my, my interest. And I, and I just said, look, you know, it's, it's not the right time for me to do it. Um, you know, we didn't really get into the whole, you know, scandal part of it. But that would have been difficult. I mean, I, you know, I think the reaction is warranted and probably even stronger than I thought it was going to be from fans, et cetera, in spring training. It's going to be a tough year for them. There's no question about it. And, and I think there is under a, a huge amount of pressure to prove now that, you know, what Jim Crane said was that he thought, well, it didn't really help us that much. Well, well let's see. You know, see when they don't have the, the, the signs and they're an extremely talented team, but they're, they've got a lot of pressure on, on them this year. Yeah. Uh, coronavirus stopped the momentum yes. of, of pissed off baseball fans. Hey, Mark, it is great to see you. I hope you and your wife and your children and your extended family and everybody is doing great. Thank you for being the first of many of these interviews we're going to do with friends of the show, friends in real life, uh, people in the world of sports and finding out what they're doing during coronacation. So thank you very much. Coronacation. Yeah. All right. Well, say, say hi to BR for me. We got thinking about him and his family and uh, you guys be safe. All right. All right. Back to you, man. Thank you. All right. Peace.